Hello and welcome to another episode. Uh, you may notice I'm away again in North Wales and that's why I can't be at the Kia EV3 event today. A few weeks ago you may remember I did an episode on how to find out your battery degradation using car scanner and an OBD adapter. A link to that episode is up above. I have many comments on that video and actually contain some excellent data. I've now gathered that data into a spreadsheet which I will come back to later in this episode. Since then I came across this article from Geotab on battery degradation, which some of you may already have seen. By complete coincidence, Geo Geotab is the fleet management company that Kia has just signed a deal with on their PBB vans. Geotab has done this study on 10,000 fleet vehicles from multiple manufacturers. I thought it would be useful to compare our EGMP results in my spreadsheet uh, with this study, which is a really interesting study. So what do they say in this study? Uh, a lot has changed in the world of electric vehicles over the past five years. When we analysed EV battery health in 2019, we found EV batteries degraded on average at 2.3% per year. Of course, some EVs perform better than others, but the average was surprisingly good. In 2024, we performed a new analysis and the results indicate that EV batteries have improved significantly, degrading at 1.8% per year on average. Geotab research shows that EV batteries could last 20 years or more if they degrade at an average rate of 1.8% per year, as we have observed, and even then, they will still have 80% state of health. While our analysis shows more or less linear degradation, as a general rule, EV battery life is expected to decline in non-linear fashion, an initial drop which continues to decline but at a far more moderate pace. Towards the end of it, its life, drivers can expect to see a final significant drop in battery state of health as seen in the chart below. The following factors can affect battery life, age, temperature, operating state of charge, AC versus DC charging, usage, that's energy cycles, uh, battery chemistry, battery system and thermal management components. Batteries exposed to hot days degrade faster than those in temperate climates. As you can see in this graph, the two lines are the on the graph are temperature fewer than five days per year over 80 Fahrenheit or 27 Celsius or under 23 Fahrenheit or minus 5 Celsius hot more than five days per year over 80 Fahrenheit or 27 Celsius you can clearly see the difference different makes of cars can have different levels of degradation for example liquid cooling and Tesla versus air cooling in Nissan Leaf clearly shows liquid cooling as a more positive impact. High EV use does not equal higher battery degradation, using level 2 AC charging at least. How do charging methods affect battery health? Our analysis showed no significant impact on degradation rates when comparing high use and low use vehicles when controlling for DC charging use. However, analysing the same vehicle model in a high use situation exposed to different climates and charging power, we saw a strong correlation between high temperate climates, frequency of high power charge usage and battery decline. On the other hand, the use of DCFC equipment does appear to significantly impact the rate of which batteries degrade. Rapidly charging the battery means high currents resulting in high temperatures, both of which strain batteries. In fact, many automakers suggest drivers and fleet managers limit the use of DC fast charging to prolong their electric vehicle's battery life. Battery degradation appears to be strongly correlated with DCFC use for vehicles in seasonal or hot climates. So how to extend battery life? Uh, the data on how temperature affects battery life tells us that exposure to heat is likely to make batteries degrade quicker and driving in moderate climate conditions is best for battery health. At moderate temperatures, batteries may even degrade slower than average. When it comes to EV battery charging best practices, we recommend fleets minimize DC fast charging. Some high use duty cycles will need a faster charge, but if your vehicles sit overnight on level two AC, it should be sufficient for most of your charging needs. It's also a good idea to avoid keeping vehicles sitting with a full or empty charge. Ideally, keep vehicles state of charge between 20 and 80%, particularly when leaving them unused for longer periods. Reserve full charges for long distance trips. Do not hesitate to put electric vehicles to work. Our research finds that high use is not a concern for EV battery lifespan. So back to my viewers degradation spreadsheet data. Including mine, I had 11 responses with usable data. The worst figure in the spreadsheet is an EV6 GT with 21,000 miles with 10% degradation. This is using the higher figure of 74,500 watt hours as a 100% figure. 
this seems like the odd one out. I can't explain how it's down to 10%. Maybe driving fast in a hot climate? I don't know. So this begs the question, does an all-wheel drive car have higher degradation than a rear-wheel drive car? Do full GT models have higher degradation than other models? Obviously, more data is required to reach conclusions. The next worst case is an almost three-year-old EV6 at 6.62% uh, degradation. This has had a year of DC fast charging and ties up with the results of the Geotab study. My car is currently at 1.54% uh, degradation in the UK and the cooler climate. I also mostly charge on AC on solar power between 1.3 and 2.5 kilowatts. I also only charge 100% for long journeys. Uh, this is also backed up in the Geotab study. In my spreadsheet, the overall average is 3.63% loss in cars that are between one and almost three years old. So I think this is a good result for EGMP vehicles. And the full Geotab article is well worth a read. I'll put a link to the spreadsheet where I've gathered the data for you to peruse just in your own time if you want to have a look at it. And uh, I hope you find this useful. Thanks for watching.